uh, the vessel. Uh, loads of people on board. You can probably make them out sort of beneath the lifeboats there, and there's obviously going to be a huge uh, send-off uh, for her when she goes in a few moments' time. You can see her so the engines, their smoke coming out of the funnel there on top of the QE2, a very, very familiar site in Southampton and on uh, Southampton water. Not for much longer, though, because she is about to leave on her final voyage, going to Dubai, where she will become a permanently docked floating hotel. Let's bring in Robert Hall, who is in Southampton for us. Uh, Robert, I imagine there are some people feeling very sad tonight about the fact that they won't be seeing the QE2 there at Southampton for much longer. I was talking to somebody from Cunard earlier on this afternoon. There have been tears pretty well all day from one person or another. Yes, there's a lot of people sad to see her go. I think there is also an acknowledgement that at 40 years old, she's had a very good and very active life. The mileage, the number of passengers, the statistics say that. And uh, there seems to be confidence, and we'll be hearing it from uh, one of her former captains in a short while, that she is going to a good home. The uh, entrance into Southampton wasn't without mishap. There was a brush with the sandbank, and it really was no more than that. No bad damage, a minor delay this morning, and certainly no delay tonight. Let's look around here before I show you some pictures from earlier in the day. The band down here, the people on the quayside, dock workers, uh, people from Cunard, up here on the balcony, which has got to be one of the best uh, seats in the house, if I can call it that, uh, specially invited guests, uh, former captains, as I said, people from Southampton City, the bond between the ship and the city, very strong. But let's look now back at the QE2's life as she prepares to set off for a very well-deserved retirement. From the water and from the air, they've queued to say their goodbyes. This would not be a quiet retirement. I name this ship Queen Elizabeth II. In September 1967, the giant, known previously as job number 736, made her entrance onto the ocean-going stage. She'd go on to become the longest-serving vessel with one of the oldest operating companies. 800 transatlantic crossings, a name synonymous with luxury afloat. In 1982, she gained heroin status when she served as a troop ship during the Falklands conflict. A return, just one iconic moment in 40 years of service. Today, she welcomed her last royal visitor as her home port hurried to prepare her for the voyage to a new home in Dubai and to ensure that everyone on board had the means to offer her the toast she richly deserves. Well, there's been a certain amount of toasting up here, and particularly from former captains of the ship. I've got two of them, Captains Woodall and Arnott. Uh, let's find out when you were captains, first of all. How long uh, are you a Captain Bob, I gather captain you were known Bob, as? Captain Bob, yes. I was captain from 1976 to 1985, with a couple of years missing. And I, I didn't yes. go to the Falklands in 82, and I, went, I had a year off in 1979. How would you define her at that time? What did she represent? Well, she's everything that's British, isn't she, really? She's the last of the fine liners. Uh, as any doubt. There's nothing Captain, to replace her. Captain Woodall, when, when did you serve on board? I, as master, from 1987 to 1994. So you didn't see her through the Falklands, or did no, you? No. I was, ironically, as far as away as I could be, in command of Kinard Princess in Alaska. <laughs> How would you sum up this ship? It's very difficult, I know, because all ships are different. But what about this one? I'm often asked that, and I, if I knew the answer, I would bottle it and sell it. Um, she's just got that something that certain ships get. It's a mixture of the ship itself the, and mainly the crew. They make or break a ship, and this ship has been very fortunate in having a good crew. What, a, what about what would you would you add to that? I mean, it, it, what would she like to sail? I think that's the key thing. But what would she like to actually command and sail? She was a super ship. I mean, she handles very well indeed. And uh, well, there's nothing much more I can add to what Robin said. Really, I mean, she's the finest ship that ever sailed. I think, in my opinion. When we were chatting earlier, you described her as the last of a line. What did you mean? Well, the last of the great liners. I mean, she is, you know, because these modern ships at all. Fairness. They're not, uh, well, ships in the true sense of the word. What did you think, Captain Woodall, when you heard she was going to be retired and, and where she was going to and the home she was, she was going to be spending her retirement in? What did you think? I was very sad, obviously, because I spent 14 years of my 44 years at sea on this ship. 
right from the second officer up to captain at varying times. So very, very sad to see her go. But equally, God bless her, she's 41 years old since she got her bottom wet. Um, and that's a long time for ships, but she still looks like a proper ship. And that's what we're going to miss, I think. I think the send-off that she's going to have, looking at all these people here, tremendous excitement. There's a real bond, and I guess you were aware of it, both of you, with the city and the port, isn't there? Oh, absolutely, yes. But wherever she's been in the world, she was always, uh, you know, she always had a terrific uh, reception. It was unbelievable, there. Yeah. There's always a, I mean, she's always been welcome whenever I've seen her coming in. There's always a big welcome when she comes back. She's a bit like an old friend here, isn't she? Yeah. I was very fortunate to be captain when she was given the freedom of the city. So I could drive my sheep through the bar gate now. <laughs> um, one, just one of those things, she's become part of Southampton and part of the Great Britain scene, I think. She had her small dramas, though. I bet you both experienced a drama or two, didn't you? Yes. Well, what about you? What, was, what, what would you remember? Well, uh, two, I, I don't want to call it a drama, but um, being in command when the Queen came on board in 1990, I was very honoured to be captain then. And taking her into Liverpool for the first time, um, a wonderful memory, it really was. I remember going up the river and saying to the pilot, I thought that that was nice golden sands over there. It looks like mud now. And he said, that's not mud, that's people. <laughs> and it was. Always, wherever she goes, even on the farewell tour, your lasting memory of her? Well, uh, likewise, wherever you go, uh, she's so popular. That people turn out in the thousands, literally, don't they? They really do. Yes. And I'm so very sad to see her go because I was with her right from the beginning. I joined her in the Tide Bank just uh, two weeks after the Queen launched her, and I stood by her and sailed as chief officer on her maiden voyage. So, you know, I really had a long, a long period with her. Really. Well, look, thank you both very much. Stay with me. Don't go too far away because I want to go back to the rail so we can see yeah. what's going on. But I'm going to invite you back and we'll have a little muse as she goes off down the river. So just let's, but I want to show you what's going on. Side here. She's due to um, slip her moorings very, very shortly. Um, in fact, not quite yet. So I tell you what we'll do. Why don't we hear a, a little bit of an interview we recorded earlier? Because we talked, we've heard from the two captains. Let's hear from a member of the crew, a former member of the crew, who we spoke to a little earlier in, in daylight on the quayside here, and he told us a little bit about he, how he felt today. My name is Ken, Ken Goff, and I worked on the QE2 as a night steward, room service at night. Uh, the main one I, 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 th I really enjoyed looking after was uh, Dean Martin and his family. They, they occupied the entire deck, and uh, they weren't in any trouble, and it was a lovely man, lovely man to look after. We had a very rough cruise in 1978 going across to New York. I had photographs taken of the hurricane that we entered and the damage was incredible. They couldn't cook meals because of the uh, kitchens with all the pots and pans flowing everywhere so everyone had to live on sandwiches. I'm Marion Hughes and in 1974 and 1975 I had the good fortune to work on the casino in there. We had on board at one time um, Salvador Dali and his wife, very eccentric as you can imagine, very very eccentric but no trouble or anything but weird with his set at the end of the tables with his long moustache and everything. Um, we also had um, Mr Robert Maxwell on at one time, um, let's just say that we were quite glad when he got off. All of us that worked in the casino <laughs> kept us up till about seven in the morning gambling, which was quite unusual. Well, here on the quayside, uh, she has slipped her moorings. I'm just watching now. If I get uh, Steve was on camera, just swing round to the bow. You might just be able to make out now. There she goes. That is the moment that this crowd have been waiting for. 
Perhaps some of them have been dreading it, I don't know, but the Union Jacks are out all the way along the balcony here and up on the decks, on the upper decks. Nobody in those uh, restaurants on the lower decks. Everybody up at the rails for this moment. This is a moment that will never be repeated. There have been many departures from the ocean terminal, but this is the last time, and the gap between the ship and the quayside widening as she moves out into the channel. Now, what will happen here is slightly less dignified than perhaps uh, the old ship deserves. She's going to have to travel astern, backwards for the landlubbers, towards Southampton's Mayflower Park, which is a big open area about uh, half a mile to a mile from where I'm standing at the terminal. Down there is a huge crowd. They were expecting tens of thousands, both in the park, along the coastline in Southampton, and on the other side of the channel from where I'm standing uh, at Hythe, those people who know this area, loads and loads of people been arriving during the evening, hoping that the weather would stay dry, and it has. And there the QE2 slipping away from her moorings for the very last time. Below me here, the drum major of the band, musical director there, offering his salute as the band pay a formal farewell to the great ship. There she goes. And I think we... I think there's been a lot of emotion here today, as you can imagine. Down on those people you can see on the quayside, a lot of those have served on the ship. Uh, some people up here. In fact, if let me just bring in this lady and gentleman here. Come join me for a moment, because I know you've got a personal story relating to this ship. <laughs> Tell me what it is. Well, we met on board, and uh, we've been married for 25 years now, and uh, so it's got good memories for us. Yeah. What were you both? Were you both serving in the crew at the time? Yes, I was a dancer. I was in a group called Sweet Elegance which was the first group of dancers, professional dancers, that worked on board. And I did the 1978 Great Pacific and Orient Cruise. And my father always told me to befriend my barman and my chef, and I befriended my barman. And he's standing here now, and as you stand looking at this, we're just looking at that ship moving away from us. Well, mixed feelings, eh? Yeah, mixed feelings, because um, whilst we worked on board, I also worked with the company for many years, and... Uh, Still do. I still do, but um, I've recruited many of the staff and uh, I know it's an emotional day for all the crew as well. Uh, so. There's a lot of talk of tears and it's a good home she's going to. It, it, yes. she's, you know, it's, a, it's a dignified retirement, isn't it? It is, yes. It's a dignified way for her to go because she's a beautiful ship. She's got a lot of happy memories and I think that she will have a happy retirement there. What was so special about her? Um, I think the camaraderie and the closeness between the, all the crew on board, um, the, uh, the history and tradition and, and events like this, wherever you went around the world, um, and I've worked on many ships, but this ship always pulled the crowds. Was she a romantic ship? You obviously thought so. Yeah, it could yeah. be romantic, yeah. Yeah, it could be <laughs> romantic. We had a lot of fun, but it was hard work, but good, good times. Do you think ships have changed? Have you, have you been on the more modern ships? Do you, how would you compare them? Yes, I Without naming I'm... ships, we won't <laughs> name names here, but what do you think? Names. My husband still works for the company, so um, without naming ships, yes, I have been on other ones. I personally like the smaller ships. Um, the ships the size of the QE2 is great. Um, personally, not the bigger ones, but, yeah, very romantic and very much a sense of looking after one another. Everybody looked after one another on there, from the lowest to the highest, from the, the captain right the way down. Everybody knew each other and knew who you were. Do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, special ship, and uh, I'm glad to see her going out on a high. It's quite a party, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. You very, wouldn't have missed this. Wouldn't have missed it, no, absolutely. <laughs> Look, thank you both very much. I think it's very nice we should be with you tonight. Good, lovely, 25 yeah. years. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Great, yeah. thank you very much thank indeed. Very much. Thank, you. thank you. So there you have it. We've had some captains, we've had a bit of romance. We'll bring the captains back in in a moment, but let's just take in this scene because it's the elegant lines of that ship that people will remember. She has been described as a greyhound, and I guess that's what, he, what she was, all those millions of miles. And she's moving down now towards uh, Mayflower Park. I just wanted to show you before I hand back, uh, Steve, if you could just pan round to your left, we can just see that she's got 
quite an attendance there. The send-off has just begun and we'll be back a little later on. So, John, back to you.